we're rolling. All right, this is an interview at the New Scotland Historical Society. It's the 27th of September, 2007, approximately 1.30 p.m. The interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name? My name now is Elizabeth K. Clark. In the military, first name, middle initial, so I had to go by Hannah E. Knapp, which was my maiden name. Okay. Where and when were you born? I was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, on January 19, 1921. Okay. Um, do you remember where you were when you heard about Pearl Harbor? It was Sunday afternoon, and I was double-checking. They said uh, that Pearl Harbor was something like 7, 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning. I said, no, it was in the afternoon, but that was Hawaiian time. Mm -hmm. I was home from college for the weekend. Sunday afternoon, my parents were asleep upstairs taking a nap, and I just remember hearing it. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your reaction, what you thought well, about it? Well, this whole uh, report, I must tell you, I was extremely naive, very naive. I didn't know what was going on when I was engrossed in my college, and uh, I didn't, wasn't particularly concerned. It just mm -hmm. didn't mean that much to me at that point. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was your educational background prior to going to service? Well, I uh, got my uh, Bachelor of Arts at Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, and I graduated June 1942. And I must say at that point, I went down to the recruiting office and asked, uh, I wanted to join up. And they said, well, what can you do? I said, well, I'm a liberal arts graduate. <laughs> and they said, but yeah, what can you do? I said, well, I don't know. And they suggested I take my dietetic internship, which was one year, and I'd already been accepted for that. So uh, that was from July 1, 1942 to July 1, 1943. And they said if I if I joined the Army in 42, I'd be a whack with a private pay. If I mm -hmm. take the internship, I'd be a commissioned officer with a lieutenant to pay. So obviously that's mm -hmm. what I did. I took that. Okay. Why did you decide to enlist? Well, it was a thing to do. Everybody did I didn't I didn't give it a second thought. And the strange thing is I realized my parents never showed any deep concern because uh, my first daughter were NYPE, New York Port of Embarkation. I knew I was going overseas, and to me it was a big adventure, and they never protested, but I'm sure they must have had a pretty good idea what it was all about. Okay. Um, did you go for basic training at all? No basic training, and I don't think I was uh, particularly welcomed by a lot of the nurses when I was at Camp Shanks there because they were all still in their blue uniforms from basic training in the States, and I immediately got my OD, all draft uniform, and that meant going overseas, so that's what I got. Now, what rank did they get? The second you? lieutenant. Second lieutenant, okay. Um, so you went basically without much military training right overseas? I didn't know how to salute. I didn't know how to put the insignia on my uniform. I was so green. I didn't didn't know anything was going on. So you went right to New York as a port of embarkation yeah. and then you went overseas immediately. Yeah, yeah. I went to uh, the Brooklyn port of embarkation mm -hmm. and of course when I arrived there I was in civilian clothes and it was just a beehive of activity and to go from one room to another I had to have a military escort even if it was one room next to the next room. Mm -hmm. But um, then they shipped me off to Camp Shanks. Now I noticed in this movie that we've seen at Ken Burns, they said Camp Shanks, New Jersey. And I went to Camp Shanks, New York. I don't that's think where Camp were. Shanks yeah. was. Yeah. So that's where I was uh, at a staging area. Hmm. Okay. Um, so when did you go overseas? Uh, I think it was actually August 8th. I was. Um, I reported for duty August 1st, 1943, and uh, I think eight days later, I was on shipboard. Wow. Something like that, I don't know, within a week or so. What kind of ship were you on? A big one. <laughs> uh, 
I understand there are 7,000 troops on our ship. Oh, okay. And we were in the, one of the big convoys that zigzagged across the Atlantic, mm -hmm. several, I don't know how many troop ships, and we had the battleships on the outside as protection. And um, I don't know that it had a name. Uh, uh, maybe I knew it, but I, I don't mm -hmm. remember. Okay. Were there a lot of women on board ship? Well, just, uh, I just remember nurses from our unit, but there must have been other mm -hmm. units of nurses, but uh, not many. So you were assigned to a hospital unit? Yeah, 70th General. Okay. <clears throat> How did you get along with the other nurses, uh, the other others in your group? Well, fine. Uh, we didn't have too much contact because, um, uh, well, there were 100 nurses at General Hospital, 500 enlisted men, 50 male doctors, 100 female nurses, and two physiotherapists and two dietitians. And uh, we were all, the women, of course, were all housed together, tent, tented together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got along fine. I, my work was mainly in the kitchen, the mm -hmm. patient's mess, so I didn't have an awful lot of contact with them. Now, where did you go after you crossed the Atlantic? Where did you go? We, uh, well, we <clears> didn't <throat> know where we were going. Mm -hmm. they, after a while, they gave us a little book that was uh, said North Africa, and we landed in Iran, North Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, we spent uh, two weeks in a Sta staging area west of our man called Ain El Turk. And uh, we were there, well, actually, um, we were there for a few days and then they sent our unit on temporary duty to a little town 75 miles south of Oran called Boanithia. And that's where the 21st General Hospital had been stationed for a year, I believe. So we were there for about six weeks to relieve them so they could have some R&R. &R. And uh, it took that long for our hospital to be built. So. Now, what did your hospital look like? Were, was it a tent structures or? Everything was in tents except there were a couple permanent buildings. Uh, I'm not sure, maybe they were the offices or something like that. Mm -hmm. But the patients and all the personnel were in tents. We were four, the women at least, were four to a tent. I don't know. And then we had uh, three mess halls, patient mess hall, opposite mess hall, and enlisted men's mess hall. And now as a dietitian, what were your duties? What did you have to do? Well, we planned the menus and uh, we supervised the special. Uh, interestingly enough, there were a lot of special diets even though they were in the military. And I know we had two uh, cooks at prepared the diet food that they didn't know a thing about special diet cooking, you know. And so we supervised that. We visited the patients on the wards. Uh, that was essentially what we did. Now, what kind of foods did you serve? <laughs> well, when we first went overseas, of course, we had dehydrated powdered eggs, which didn't go over very well, and uh, canned vegetables, canned fruits. and I vividly remember the Lister bags. We had the great big canteen containers that held the water, chlorinated water. Mm -hmm. So the only way you could drink it is you made it with lemonade or coffee. And we had uh, margarine, not butter, and uh, lots and lots of orange marmalade and uh, Spam. <laughs> uh, we had some fresh meat, but uh, not a lot. But I don't know how soon after, it was quite a while before we got fresh eggs for breakfast, but uh, ultimately we did. Were you ever u able to use any of the local food sources? Yeah, I think we used the local produce, mm -hmm. uh, the fruits and vegetables. And uh, we were out, uh, our hospital was located about six miles outside of Iran, and that's what Ernie Pyle wrote about, This Is Your War. I tried to find that book at home. We have it, but uh, it's the one he described in his book. There were six big general hospitals there together. Mm -hmm. Now, you said you uh, served like a lot of special diets. Yeah. Well, basically, yeah. 
were they because of malnutrition? Well, or? now, uh, the patient, the fellows, they came in with broken jaws, fractured jaws, and their jaws wanted to get it. Mm -hmm. So obviously they had to have liquid foods, like mm -hmm. liquid custard, things like that. And then um, I, I'm sure we had some diabetics. I'm not sure how they got into service, but they mm -hmm. did. Uh -huh. And then we had soft diets, mechanically soft foods, you know, if they, and some of them had stomach uh, wounds, you know, and couldn't tolerate the regular food. Now, were the officers fed differently than the enlisted? No, we all had the same food. Mm -hmm. uh, ultimately, when we got up to Pistoia in northern Italy, uh, we had a lot of German um, patients, and uh, they got fed adequately, but they would be the ones to get the powdered eggs, not the fresh eggs. Mm -hmm. That would be the main difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, how long were you in North Africa? We were there for about 15 months, I think, from uh, September 43 to January uh, 40, 45. Um, did you ever get to travel around? In yeah, we had, um, well, when I was in Iran, I'd get passes to go into the city. When I was in Pistoia, well, we were in Naples for a little while, so I got to go to Rome for a few days. And then when I was in Pistoia, I remember one of the nurses and I, I don't know how we got away with it, we took an absolutely illegal trip. We got one of the enlisted men to drive a jeep and we went up to Genoa, Venice, Bologna, and um, we had no problem. <laughs> had nobody ever reported us. Now, um, what, what were your, how much did you work? Did you work every day or? We had eight hour shifts from mm -hmm. 7 to 3.30 or a split shift from 8 to 2, 4, 6, something like that. And there were two dietitians in the hospital to begin with. Later, when we got up to the study, we had three dietitians. But uh, usually a split ship and never more than eight hours. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Did you do any work besides uh, dietary work? No, just strictly dietetics. Now, how many did you have working with you? You had the two dietitians. How many cooks did you have? I can't be sure. Mm -hmm. and, Did you uh, use any local people in the kitchens? At I all? remember one, we had an Italian prisoner of war, and he was very friendly, very interested in our setup. No, was this in Italy? In in, Italy? In North, no, this was, in North in, Africa. this was still in North Africa. Mm -hmm. And he would, he wanted to know all about our work, you know, and not, he was just genuinely interested. Mm -hmm. But um, at the very beginning, of course, in around October, November of 43, we started out with just a few patients and build up more and more and more. And I think it was in December of 44 that we built it up to about 1,400 patients, most of them bed patients at that point. Although in the, um, in the spring of 44 too, I remember, we had a lot of psychiatric patients. And they mentioned that in that movie, a lot of, there were a lot of them that this could handle the war. Mm -hmm. We had both open and closed psychiatric wards and uh, Quite a lot of them. I think most of the patients were that at the beginning of it. Now, did, were the, where did the patients stay? Did they stay in tents yeah. or were there eventually any permanent structures built? Not in, not in North Africa, no. Mm -hmm. It was very different in Italy. In Italy, we were in uh, buildings with big red crosses on two story buildings and uh, officers and patients and kitchens. Um, when did you go over to Italy? Uh, in the spring of 1945, I'm not sure, January or February, something like that. Mm -hmm. And we went to this little town called Pistoia, which is northwest of Florence. Now, um, apparently they considered that at the time a combat area. And I, uh, the movies we saw last night, um, 
they were starting telling about the troops going up to Anzio and Rome. Mm -hmm. And I don't think last night they got any further than Rome. Maybe there's going to be more of that. But that's, um, we, we took a hospital ship from Iran to Naples. And then we stayed in Naples for a short time. And then they took a big convoy up from Naples to Pistoia. That was along the coast then? Yeah. Now, did your food supplies change any moving up there? Or? I can't say that they did, no. Mm -hmm. Now, did you rely on local foods again? Well, somewhere? yeah, but it was um, winter, January, okay. February, March. We had snow mm -hmm. up there. Mm -hmm. So we didn't get no local garden for food at that right, time. But right. uh, I think we had local produce. I'm pretty sure we did. Did you ever make use of local meats or anything like that? Or? I don't think so. I remember the meat coming in frozen all the mm -hmm. time, and these uh, boys would have to, the ground beef, you know, that they'd have to make into meat patties. And I remember specifically one fellow who actually developed arthritis because of working with that frozen meat all the time. Uh, but I think that all came from the States, but I'm not positive. Mm -hmm. Now, was your hospital in Italy larger because you said there were three dietitians? I. I don't know why they got three. It wasn't any larger mm -hmm. there, but um, it did add a third one. Now you did, up there you did have German prisoners. Yes, German prisoners. Were they separated? Yes. Now, of course, I never saw them on the ward. Uh, like I said, I was terribly naive, and naive then I didn't really realize a lot that was going on. Now, um, compared to these combat pilots, uh, number 10 and me being a one as far away from adventure and mm -hmm. guns and there now we could hear the cannons up in Pistoia like distant thunder mm -hmm. so we obviously were not too far from the front there but uh, were most of your uh, people that were in the hospital there where they um, had received combat wounds or again did you have psychiatric treatment? Well actually uh, there too, or? they were uh, combat wounds. We became really what well, amounted to a large station hospital and uh, Now what do you mean by that? Well uh, uh, the, when the uh, soldiers were wounded they would go to a field hospital first right. then a bigger hospital would be a station hospital mm -hmm. and ultimately the big general hospital from which they would be sent home but we actually acted more like a station hospital, close, much closer to the front when we were in Italy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there were the three different types then, the field, a station hospital, and, and general. the general. Now, do you remember uh, where you were when you heard about the death of President Roosevelt? Well, that was in '45, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So we were—I was in Pistoia when I heard that. Okay. Were there ever any uh, USO shows at all near your hospital? Actually, Did any um, entertainers come in. I didn't see any or hear of any USO shows. Of course, I was a lot longer in Africa than I was in Italy. Mm -hmm. Uh, there must have been, but I, I don't recall mm -hmm. hearing about them. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see Ernie Pyle? No, I never saw him. No, no, okay. All right. Um, your hospital then, um, being a, a, a called a general hospital, but a station hospital, you were just handling them then that were coming in from the field yeah. hospitals? Yeah. So it must have been treating some pretty severe wounded. Yeah, I know. Uh, I remember that they'd say, "Well, it'll be 50, 50 litters a ambulances coming in," and I don't know if they held two or four patients, but they'd come in like fifty of them at night and a hundred another night and uh, a lot like mm -hmm. that. So your hospital must have been much larger in Italy then. Well, not in personnel, uh -huh. but the patients, and, and I had a. A little record book at home that showed the number of patients we had each day in North Africa and what their diets were, but I can't find it. Mm -hmm. Now, did you have to go with a, a lot of specialized diets when you were in Italy, mm -hmm. also? Yeah. 
But my memory of Africa, even though it was further back, mm -hmm. is much more vivid than the one in Italy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how long were you in Italy? We were there until um, about September 1st. We, we, were, uh, we went from Pistoia to Leghorn, and that's where we stayed until we were, uh, until we left Italy. Mm -hmm. Now, what was that Leghorn? That well, we were all stationed in a big room, and they were just waiting and waiting and waiting for us to ship out. We all thought we were going to the Pacific until we were out at sea, and they said we were going home. Mm -hmm. Now, where were you when the war in Europe ended? In Pistoia? Yeah, that was in June of 45, wasn't it? 44. Um, 44. No, 45. 45. Yeah, but that, I was in Italy then, yeah. Mm -hmm. What was your reaction in the hospital when that was announced? Oh, uh, I see, I say I was so naive. I, I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't touched that much by the actual conflict as well, the patients. Mm -hmm. or, you know, so I didn't have it. I know we were happy about it, but uh, it didn't seem that we kept right on with, if that was in June, we still maintained the hospital for several months before we disbanded. Oh, so the hospital then stayed in operation at least until the fall of that year? Yeah, until September. September, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, how did you return home? By ship. But I don't remember that ship as well as I remember mm -hmm. the one going over. Mm -hmm. Where did you, the ship, dock? At, at Boston. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how much longer did you stay in the service? I immediately left. Got, uh, within a week. Mm -hmm. They had me uh, on the rolls until January of 46, but from September to January I was at home. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you feel about your experience overseas? Well, I uh, wish I had seen more adventure, you know, because mine was quite tame compared to the rest of them. But uh, uh, I was very happy to serve. It just seemed the thing to do. Uh, in my uh, internship, there were 11 dietitians, and 10 of us went into service. Mm -hmm. so. Now, how did you keep in contact with your parents? <clears throat> my parents? Just mm -hmm. uh, these little email, or not email. Email? Email. 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 Yes. And um, I remember getting some letters from them. You know, they were just real small, about three by three, very mm -hmm. small. And uh, of course, we could write what we wanted in the letters. I didn't ever say where I was, but we didn't have to have our mail censored. Oh, you didn't have Not as officers, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did you... Uh, did you use the GI Bill at all? When oh you? yes, I came home, and uh, if I, I got home in uh, September of '45, and then in 1947 to '48, I took a graduate degree at uh, Ohio State, got my master's. Now, what did you get it in? Dietetics. Dietetics. Yeah. Uh, did you work in uh, that field then? Not. I was married and had a family right away, and I didn't go back to work until. Um, 74, and I worked at the VA hospital in Albany for 12 years. Okay. Um, were you able to join a veterans organization? Well, you know, well? that's interesting. I finally enjoyed, joined the American Legion just recently, but I, my first husband, uh, really, uh, he was, uh, he, although he wanted to get in the war and served in the war, he also wanted to get home. And then uh, I think it bothered him. He was a lawyer with a good education, but I outranked him. He was a <laughs> staff sergeant, and I think that that didn't go over very well. He never mentioned it particularly, but I he, I was not allowed to have any contact with anybody from the Seventieth General Hospital all my years I was married to him. Hmm. Never the Legion or anything military. It was just forbidden. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Now, did you stay in contact? After that, with anyone that was with, with, with the, my boss, one dietitian, and mm -hmm. I, we sent Christmas cards every year. We still have over 65 years. 66. Wow, she's still with me. Well, I tried to get her on the phone the other day, and they gave no record of that name and address. I'm not sure because mm -hmm. each year somebody is tied in my group. Mm -hmm. I don't know if she's she mm -hmm. was alive last Christmas. So. Mm -hmm. How do you think your time in the service had an effect on your life? 
Well, I'm proud of it. I'm really, really proud of it. Wish I'd done more, because mine is insignificant compared to what most of them did. Mm -hmm. But without I, you, they wouldn't have been able to eat. Oh, well, <laughs> they'd have eaten somehow. <laughs> but uh, I, I was pleased and proud that I served. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, like um, I was son who was 58, and he was drafted for the Vietnam War. And he's a pacifist. But his father, being a lawyer, he got legal, went to the legalities of becoming a, 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 a conscientious objector. And yet he's been very kind to me and taken me to military places in Washington and things like that. So. Now you have some photographs with you. Yeah, now they're in sequence here, okay. sort of. Okay. Um, I don't know how many of them you want. So. Well, we'll this, there's one here that's the, now this first one is in the, If you, you hold it like that, Wayne can focus on that. Uh, this is uh, in Bonifia, this uh, resort uh, that we took over when we were uh, in temporary duty with. When we first went overseas, and this is about 75 miles south of Oran, and they were in Neeson huts there. Okay. And um, now this is our hospital in tents. Uh, in our, in uh, well, we were in a little tiny town called City Shami outside of Iran. And uh, the cooks are. This is all in around 1943 then. Yeah, 43. And okay. Around, and okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, this is just like it. And uh, there you see a lot of it. this is everything in tents. Even the church was in a tent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, you have covers on the sides? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, in the, when we first went overseas, we did not, we had tents that were just the canvas to the ground, but then they uh, did what <coughs> they call winterizing them. Mm -hmm. And they put, I guess it was plywood or something, they went. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you ever have any trouble with insects or snakes not, or anything at all? No, but it was very cold. In, even in Iran, which is in North Africa, mm -hmm. and um, my washcloth would freeze to the little clothesline I had. But uh, and we did have mosquito netting, and we also got um, malaria shots mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. Now was that shot you and your husband? Where? No, that's a mess sergeant. Oh, okay. I, <laughs> I did bring him on. <laughs> and that's that's me in Iran. Okay. So, yeah, you were there during, was it ever that warm there? Yeah, it got quite warm. Mm -hmm. Do you want to hold up that big picture? Well, she has them in order. Oh. Oh, yeah, well, that's, oh, wait, well, here's a. Oh, oh, I didn't see that. That's a, <laughs> my. Did you ever have to wear a helmet at all? Or? Well, we took some hikes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And of course, we used to fill the enlisted men's backpacks with rocks, you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the best picture of me, military wide, although it's small. I'm getting a little glare. Can you just tilt it forward just a little bit? Yeah, that's good. Oh, this is on our um, convoy from Naples to uh, Pistonia. Now, did your hospital have a lot of trucks that were assigned to it, or? Well, I, these must vehicles. have been assigned to it. I don't mm -hmm. think we had a lot of trucks mm -hmm. and things, but. Um, you must have had ambulances, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had a lot of ambulances. Mm -hmm. And this is the. Uh, this is in Oran, North Africa, in 1943. Okay. Yeah, I have a picture of our hospital in um, in Pistoia because it was quite different. But it ran away. There's another one left in the other. Oh yeah, <laughs> that might be it. Yeah, now, and this is the hospital in the Pistoia brick buildings. With, and you know, in 1988, my daughter and I were over there. We went to Pistoia, and I said, I wonder if our hospital's still there. So I saw some men 
elderly men sitting on church steps. I thought maybe they lived at that time, and nobody knew anything about the hospital. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of buildings were those? those right. more, more, they must have been Italian structures that were used before. You... I think maybe they were a school, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you very much for your interview. Okay.